I'm not going to disagree with anybody who says that Bo Nix deserves to win the Heisman. I'm not going to disagree with anybody who says Michael Penix still belongs in the Heisman race. And I 100% agree that Jaden Daniels should be the front runner, if not the clear cut winner for the Heisman in 2023. All of them have a case. And there's even guys out in the outside looking in, like Carson Beck and Marvin Harrison Jr. and Jalen Moreau, who deserve an invite to New York City. But if your argument for Jaden Daniels is he shouldn't win the Heisman because of there's three losses next to his name and he'd be backing up Bo Nixon, Michael Penix Jr. in Eugene or Seattle, your argument is flawed. Let's go ahead and talk about it. If you are new here, welcome on into the channel. My name is Cole Thompson. I'm a radio show host based in Houston and I talk college football daily. So if this is the type of content you enjoy, plus coaching searches, the college football playoff, conference championships, and a bunch of other nonsense that we have throughout the offseason, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below. Leave a comment telling me your thoughts on who should win this year's Heisman Trophy. Tell your friends, your family, your sister, your brother, your mortal enemies, your best of bros about this channel. And as always, let's continue to talk college football. By the way, if you like what you're seeing, go ahead and hit the subscribe button or follow button on Twitter, X, whatever we call it, at Mr. Cole Thompson. It's the same as my YouTube handle. So when you hit one subscribe, make sure you hit the follow button on the other. Great. Jaden Daniels this year has made history. Jaden Daniels this year has become only the second player in SEC football to finish with over 3,000 yards passing and 1,000 yards rushing. He's the seventh player in college football history to accomplish that feat. Joining names like Jalen Hurts, joining names like Lamar Jackson, Sean Watson, Johnny Manziel, Vince Young, and a few others that I have forgotten to mention. But Jaden Daniels right now is being scrutinized for playing on a roster that's going to finish anywhere between 9-3 and three and 8-4. and four. Spoiler alert. You can't go ahead and say that the award goes to the best player just because he's not on the best team. This is where we have problems with the college football playoff committee and where we have problems when it comes to the Heisman voters. They look not at the resume. They look, let me phrase that. They only look at the resume. They don't look at the actual on-field play. And that's always been a concern. It is. Because of when you look right now at Jaden Daniels and what he's doing in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and how he's able to have not only the number one scoring offense in the country, but also the number one pass, uh, number three passing offense, the number one total offense, and the number six rushing offense when they don't have a running back that's ran for over 675 yards. That, my friends, is a deciding factor. Listen. Bo Nix is doing phenomenal work out in Eugene, Oregon. And I'll be the first to admit, I did not think that this was ever going to be possible for Bo Nix. Bo Nix, we all saw him. We all relished in the fact that he wasn't finding success at, at in Auburn. And I'll be real. I was a Bo Nix fan and I still am. I wanted him to be successful in Eugene. I want him to get a clear cut shot with the coaching staff that actually believed in him. And he defied expectations beyond defied expectations. He's now leading the Ducks to their most prominent season since probably 2014. There's a very good shot that if they continue to play the way that they are, they're going to get the win over Washington in Las Vegas. And there's a shot they go to the college football playoff. And in large part, that's due to number 10 being a perfect 10. You can't deny that. And you can say, well, he has great receivers. So does LSU. You can say he has a good run game. LSU has a good run game. It's just based off the fact that it's boo your quarterback, but they still have a good run game. And so everybody out there is now saying, well, Bo Nix deserves to win the Heisman because of he's what? playing on a team that's playing for games that could lead to a national championship, you do realize that Jaden Daniels is top three in every single major category in college football. He's top three in passer rating. He's actually number one. He's number three in passing yards, or he's top three in passing yards. He's number one in passing touchdowns. He also has 10 rushing touchdowns. He has over 1,000 yards on the ground. He's one of the most complete quarterbacks when it comes to completion rating. Oh, and he also has every single game he's thrown for at least 250 yards. That wasn't possible last year. That didn't happen. He's playing on a team that doesn't have a defense. And you want to know what? If the award says give it out to the best player in college football, maybe Brian Kelly should just say, here, you go play cornerback for a couple of drives. Let's just see if you're actually decent enough to cover a player at Texas A&M. And if he does that, what's the argument? Lamar Jackson played on a team that did not go to the CFP. They didn't even go to the they didn't even go to their conference championship. Still won the Heisman. RG3 didn't have a national championship season. Still won the Heisman. Johnny Manziel, the year that he won it and he made the history books alongside Jaden Daniels, didn't play 
in the conference championship game, even though he beat Alabama. He marched into Tuscaloosa in 2012, got a 29-24 win over the Crimson Tide. Nick Saban still hoisted up the Crystal Ball Trophy in 2012. But Johnny Manziel won the Heisman. You want to know why? Because it's an individual award. And back to my whole theory about when it comes to, oh, let's talk about where he would sit behind other players. Guys, no, he wouldn't. No, he wouldn't. And I'm not saying that he wouldn't because of that's a downsize on both Bo Nix and Michael Penix, but you can make the same argument if you flip the scenario. Bo Nix says one day, I want to leave Eugene and I want to go to play underneath Brian Kelly and Baton Rouge. Okay, you have the dethrone Jaden Daniels. Oh, Michael Penix one day. I'm done playing with Kalen DeBoer. He gave me an opportunity to revitalize my career, but I want to be in the SEC country. Okay, you still have to unseat Jaden Daniels. And Garrett Nussmeyer hasn't been able to do it. Walker Howard wasn't able to do it. Even though last year it felt like fans in Baton Rouge wanted to see that happen. They weren't able to do it because Jaden Daniels did his job. And as for the comeback story, as good as Bo Nix has one, and he does, he absolutely does, for what he's gone through during his time at Auburn, how he was scrutinized in front of a team that he rooted for as a kid, Jaden Daniels had to find his pathway out of Arizona State into the SEC and was kind of an afterthought. You do realize that a lot of people didn't think that Jaden Daniels was going to be the long-term starter or even a starter for longer than a couple of games for the Tigers. They just want to get a veteran quarterback in there because of it was a brand new coaching staff. And that might have been able to ease the water in the transition underneath Ed Orgeron to Brian Kelly. That was it. That was it. And he's defied everything that we've ever asked for from a quarterback. And he's done his job pretty freaking well. In fact, you could say that he's done his job to almost an elite level. No, strike that. He has done his job to an elite level. Jaden Daniels deserves to be in New York City, not because of, oh, he's put up great numbers, but because of he's one of college football's best players. And again, if your argument is Bo Nix is deserving of the Heisman, I agree. Bo Nix this year has done things that is absolutely emphatical when you look back. Like, go in a time machine and take yourself back to 2019 and go ahead and say, hey, Bo Nix is going to win the Heisman one year. No, he's not. No, he's not. He's not going to do that. Oh, yeah, the kid that just beat Oregon? Yeah, he's going to do it with Oregon. No, he's not. He's going to be a star at Auburn. Tell yourself that. You wouldn't believe it. But also tell yourself that Jaden Daniels is going to lead college football with the number one scoring offense. He's going to lead college football with the number one passing offense. I mean, number three passing offense, number one total offense. Oh, and he's also going to make history as one of seven players to be a part of the 3K, 1K spectrum. He's going to do that. He's going to win the Heisman. You wouldn't believe that either. You wouldn't. Just because a player plays on a team that isn't playing for anything doesn't mean that they aren't playing for respect. And I've never seen a player in college football garner less respect than Jaden Daniels for the successful season he's had because of other opponents and other components around his roster failed to live up to the billing. He did his job. And the award, as much as college football is a team sport, this is an individual award individually, he has carried LSU to potentially a 9-3 and three season. He's carried LSU to potentially a 10-3 and three season if they are able to win their bowl game and he plays in the damn thing. He has done everything asked of him in Baton Rouge, and he's more than deserving of not just going to New York City, but hoisting up the damn trophy itself. I get Bo Nix. I understand that Bo Nix absolutely deserves consideration for the award, but if your only argument for LSU's quarterback, Jaden Daniels, not to be a Heisman winner. He's only has three losses. You're kidding yourself. And if your argument is, oh, he would be sitting behind Bo Nix and, and Michael Penix Jr. at their respective schools, flipping on its axis, you have the exact same argument, the opposing way. Thank you so much for watching that video. Don't hit the X button yet. Make sure you hit subscribe to keep up with all of our daily content found on Just Saying It and anything else that we post on this channel. Bye.